we're going to get started. So Grant, go ahead and give us a little bit about Bailey and what you did. Now both, I'm going to, I'm going to jump in real quick. Yeah. Both of the models have had pre-work done. The team's going to demonstrate some of their best practices on the mannequin, and then we're going to go back and we're going to talk about some tips on glossing. Great. All right, Grant. Awesome. Yeah, so hi everybody. How are you? Um, Bailey is everyone's favorite blonde. Um, she bounces between being a bit lighter, a bit darker as the seasons go by. Um, and when I was asked to find a candidate for this, I thought she would be the perfect person because this is usually the time of year where she wants to experiment with going a little bit darker. Um, so in my pre-work, I went through and brightened up around the face did a bit of foiling through there so she doesn't feel so dark after we're done, right? Um, and with that, I did a bit of a face frame, uh, 12 foils in total, and threw the rest of her hair to get a little bit more dimension in that grown out solid blonde. I did slices and weaves with our uh, zero ammonia free permanent hair color line. Um, with a 7.0, 7.00 in 5 volume, and a 6.0, 6.3 and 5 volume, just to sort of break up how solid the Summer Blonde was and start adding a bit more depth through the back. So when we do tone her down to get her to a darker fall blonde, she's still going to have that beautiful natural dimension as it starts fading up and coming back. The one thing I have to say that I really like about the oh sorry mannequin. <laughs> the one thing that I like I have to say about the dimension, it looks very natural mm -hmm. and it completely matched her natural color. Yeah, I was so surprised at how much it actually matched up to the natural. Um, with her being, you know, the lightest brown, darkest blonde, ideal foil candidate. Um, doing a seven and a six kind of scared me a little bit, but I decided to go for it. And it really has like darkened her a little bit and blended in so beautifully. So I, I love this technique. When when Bailey um, talked to Grant about going a bit darker, it's fall. Everyone's starting to back off a little bit on their highlighting. This is a beautiful technique to pre get them ready their pre color before they do their gloss. This is a beautiful way of adding that shadow back in and zero ammonia free is the most amazing product that will give you a nice even deposition. You don't get spots, it doesn't take ash at the bottom. When it deposits, it's really nice and even and clean. Yeah, no, yeah. for sure. Okay, mm -hmm. great. So I just wanted to take a moment to say hi to some of the people in our community. So we have Morgan uh, Sutcliffe Herndon. Hey, Lupe. Morgan says, hey, we've hi. got color space here with us. We've got a ton of people. Thank you for joining us, team. Mindy's here, Educator Mindy. Hi, Mindy, Educator Mindy, <laughs> Callie. Awesome, thanks guys. Okay, back to you guys. All right, so Grant's taking Bailey in, in, in color space. We have the color space way. We have processes and steps in order to get the most out of the performance of the hair color. So what Grant's doing now is shampooing Bailey and doing a bond treatment. What he's going to do is he's going to even out the porosity so that when he glosses her with the 3D EMI, it's really nice and even and it's super shiny. It's amazing. All right, let's go to Michael. Michael, what are you doing? So this is Cece. Cece changes her hair color like I change my shoes. So quite often. Awesome. <laughs> yes. One day she wants to be light, one day she wants to be a copper, one day she wants to be a blonde. But the thing that we love about Cece is no matter what color she wants, she always wants a beige. Nice. So Cece had her color done actually not too long ago with one of my co-workers and we decided, you know what, the weather's cooler now, it's getting darker out here in Canada, which is super depressing, <laughs> so we want to darken her out a little bit. So my pre-work that I did on Cece was only eight foils because she had a beautiful set of balayage put already in there, but it wasn't high up enough. So we did, right around the hairline, we did right up to the root, the ones behind that we back home, which I will show you later on. And then anything that was left in my bowl, being how I knew I was going in there and dropping in a base about two inches, I just let it die out in the bowl. And I would go over the pre-lightened bits just to give them a little bit more pop. 
then when those were sitting, I went in with a half clear, half 5.00 and five volume. And I dropped a base in there about four inches. And then I would take large panels through the interior, no rhyme and no reason. And I would go all the way through. Because one thing, if you notice in this photo, it had dimension, but it's missing that background in it. So it's almost looking a little bit too solid on the bottom. So we went through and put those dark bits in there just to really show off the lightness in them. Yes. Love it. Love it. So both of the both of the team, what they did is prepped the hair for fall. And this is an amazing technique. And, and I, I, I was like, I'm going to do this. So instead of when your client comes in and they're saying, you know, I want to go darker, I want to change my hair for fall, and we'll go in with highlights for sure, but think about adding the shadow. A highlight's not a highlight unless it's something next to something that's lighter or in a different tone. So prepping that hair with the depth so that when you're glossing them for their fall color, they have a really great foundation. Yes, put the highlights in wherever they need to be, but don't forget to add the shadow so when you gloss, you have that dimension that comes through. Brilliant. Amazing. Brilliant. All right, so go ahead and get, let's We're going to get CC bonded. Let's get her bonded. They're going to go bond. <laughs> they're going to go bond. Yes, we love it. We love bond. bonding. While they're bonding, I'm going to come this way. I don't know if you wouldn't mind coming around this way. I am going to get some product ready for the boys because they are going to be doing their foil work. We are going to mix up Lift Powder Lightener. So if you haven't seen this team, this is one of the innovations. One of the innovations is the Unimix. This Unimix is everything to a colorist and it gives you the most amazing texture. So you can mix your powder lighteners with, this is the temperature button. This only happens when you're mixing hair color. So this temperature button will bring the color to body temp. This team is the mixing button. Now what I put in there is our developer. We have 20 volume. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix in little by little. This is Lift Silver Powder Lightener. This innovation has, this is an amazing powder lightener. This will give you nine levels of lift. It's amazing, look at this. See how I'm just whipping it in there. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. I love to add little by little. And then just make sure you take the powder off the sides and off the middle of the magnet. And it's doing all the work for you. This way it makes sure all of the intended ingredients are um, mixing up inside there. So here we go, just helping it out a little and bit. And we want the temperature, again, to be, uh, how does that affect our clients? With the hair color, this is like something that's really cool. And team, this actually has a paper written about it. So when you're mixing hair color, I would hit that button there. It brings the color up to body temp. And what it does, it actually activates the color to start working. And it will keep, it, it prevents thermal shock. I'm sure all of y'all have put color on and it's been super cold. And then your client's kind of like, ah, wow, that's cold. What this does is it brings it to body temp so it doesn't start that thermal shock process. This thing is amazing. This is amazing. I love this machine. It is a two minute mix. I mean, what can you do in two minutes? You guys tap, tap in the feed. What can you guys do in two minutes? I eat. Okay, so here you can see this texture. Look at how beautiful that is. Oh yeah, it's like lush. And the minute it turns shiny, you know that it's finished. So I'm gonna let it get mixed a little bit more. We'll do this, mix it up. And when Grant comes out, he's gonna have his product ready for him. And then we've got this going. So two minute mix. This is the Unimix. This is a, 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 a stainless steel bowl. This is is an acid wash bowl so you can mix any chemistry inside here and you're gonna be fine like if you go into a, a, a manufacturer and you see them mixing color they're these big vats of stainless steel so these are acid wash they're food grade quality so it's safe to actually mix all right so this is for Grant he's gonna come around the corner and we're gonna start doing his favorite his three tips that he wants to share with you today and uh, we've got also educator Haley here. She says what she would do with her two minutes of uh, having time, she would watch a Facebook Live with yes! Lupe. So, shout out to Hi, Haley. Haley. Here you go, Grant. All right. Thank you. Hi, Haley. 
Hello again. Hello again. How is everybody out there in Hairbrain World? The community is doing well. How's Beautiful. How's it going here? Okay, so whenever I approach a client, a model, a foil technique, I always start by looking at the hairline, analyzing how it's going to be growing, how it's going to be following. Um, if you go in and you start putting a manufactured placement of foils, I find it falls and it grows out in a very manufactured way. Mm -hmm. And we want everything to be as natural as possible, especially when we're transitioning someone through the seasons. So with Bailey, I started with the face frame and the money piece in the beginning. I used lift and five volume developer, one to two, um, because I knew it was gonna be needed to process the longest, I started with that first. Um, obviously our mannequin has a very different hairline than Bailey herself, um, but starting through the side, I would find just a veil where the hair naturally wants to fall just below um, parietal ridge in the point of recession. We'll clip that out of the way. And dependent on the density of the hair, how much hair is sitting through there, sort of helps me dictate what kind of weave I'm gonna be doing. So where the hair is a bit sparser through these areas, I'm gonna use a much finer weave. Um, for this, I took just a standard, you know, fine weave to baby light. We all know mannequin hair is our absolute favorite to weave and foil. Bear with. Um, and I'm gonna go in with a diagonal placement following the way that the hair naturally wants to fall. So with that, I always like to take as many opportunities to finesse an application as possible. I'll secure the hair on the foil a little ways away from the root. I'll take everything and fully saturate it, feeling it with my hand, making sure no one's left behind. And then to finish up, I'll come closer to the hairline and I'll kind of just select one or two, three or four, and feather that a little bit closer. I'll follow a standard foil closure and that'll be the beginning of my face frame. After that, I'm going to start to just slightly pivot depending on how I want that hair to actually swing and fall and veil. And for this, I'll go from the starting point to sort of just behind that ear there. We're not looking to pack in the foils and make her solid blonde again. We're not looking to completely get rid of all of the new growth. We're looking to like blend everything through and place them as, as hair would naturally lighten in the sun, right? So for this, where we start getting a little bit more hair, I'm still gonna take a finer weave, but I'm gonna go for it a little bit more. We need a few sheets and panels of color coming through. So what made you learn, who, where did you learn this? Is this something that you have found through your years of experience? What was it that, where you came to this favorite technique? So ultimately, I think everybody benefits most from trial and error. Yes. Um, but I actually learned the most from assisting here at Chevello Queen Street. I pulled everybody's foils for the years that I was assisting. And then I would end my day with a collection of questions. Why, why did you do a slice here? Why did you do a weave there? And as I started taking my own clients and doing my own placements, it was really when I started playing around with that, I knew how it was gonna come back to me and how it was gonna like grow and live. 
So you could see right? you could see as you were pulling the foils down the effect yeah, exactly. that what these placements did. Yeah, as That's I would pull, I wouldn't just like mindlessly Correct. remove the foils as quickly as possible. I would try my best to kind of track the placements that I was seeing. Right. To like what's the word for it? Um vicariously yes. experience everybody else's placement. That's amazing. That's a really good, yeah. that's a, that is an amazing reason why to, to at least in turn for a bit to start yeah, absolutely. visually seeing absolutely. what would happen when these effects happen. These techniques, the effects on the techniques. Yep. It's, it's amazing. That's, that's smart. And I find like with assisting, interning, um, there's a difference between training and like culturing yourself to a salon and the way that people do hair and when you pay attention to that you i find you benefit the most from your mentors right where it's like is this how i want to be doing hair in the right. future right and then you actually start doing things with your heart instead of your hands right, right? And, and i find that the chicago team is trained so well and yeah. i and i wonder you know do you all take it for granted like oh yeah this is how you normally do hair because you all of your work is beautiful here. I mean, you know, the ego is a funny thing. You do kind of end up sort of <laughs> going through the motions after a while. But yes. when you start when you start mentoring others over yes. time, it really yes. causes you to reflect yes. on all of the benefits that you've had yes. from mentors over the years. Because in our careers, in our initial career development, it's like, how do I achieve this? How do I achieve this? How do I achieve yes, this? That's beautiful. And then you actually start realizing what you what you've you know. learned and what you've done when you start teaching it to others. So what were some of the um, challenges that you found when you were putting foils in before actually figuring it out? Um, slipping. Yeah. Slipping, bleeding. Yep. I saw absolutely everything. And how um, did you prevent bleeding? I found that was always, uh, or that was best controlled with the amount of product that I put yes. into the foil. Um, One thing and, that I, I'm seeing is you're not putting the product on, you're pulling it down. And yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. go in and push. Yes. I do that through here to yes. secure the hair. Yes. And then I kind of push coerce down. it. Yeah. And feather it up. And that, that technique right there will prevent bleeding from happening. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. You can see as I'm going through to where the saturation transitions. Right. Like it's really opaque. It starts sort of softening. And then through this top part here, you're really just making sure it connects to the root. That's beautiful. Right? That is beautiful. And I just want to take a moment to shout out our brushes. So what brush are you using today? Uh, so this is a brush from Color Space. Um, and it's the Pintail. Best pintail brush, brush ever. ever. It's <laughs> ergonomic as heck. Yeah. Okay, save I'm gonna your hand. Yeah, like, look, look, can we take yeah. a moment? This. Let look, me take a moment. Do you want this? No. <laughs> or do you want this? That's what I'm talking about. When you're using the wrong tools, this is what happens. You get stitches. <sighs> this is why this brush is so important to me. We had these created. These were made by an industrial engineer who watched us work and watched us how we spun the brushes around, even to the weight of the pintail, even to the bristles and how they're cut and how they're placed, even the length to go with our product. This brush is, all the brushes, we have four brushes. These brushes are meant for our hands. As a colorist team, I'm not just saying it because I, you know, like we created them. This is made to help you prevent this. So team, the brushes. Get the brushes. All right, all right. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. So we're on our last foil. Yeah, I'm just going to do one more in the face frame before I move off to the back because I think it's important to see how I'm going to sort of approach slicing and weaving, which can be really intimidating. Um, but once you move past the intimidation, I find it so beneficial. Um, Everyone is gonna, well, more often than not, everyone's gonna have a lot more hair through the back. And your effect and placement has to reflect that. If you go through and you're far too light-handed through the back, it gets lost, right? Um, another big thing that I found stopped a lot of my foils from bleeding was not compressing all of the product in it. 
Um, cause it needs room to breathe. Right. It is like, it's an oxidative product and it needs, it needs to chill out. It needs to breathe. Like, you gotta chill. Chill. yeah, just chill, just yeah. chill man. Just, just chill. chill. Easier said than done on a busy Saturday when, so, you know, <laughs> what you know. about the product? What do you find about the lip silver powder lightener that you like? I find, uh, the consistency that I like is really easy to tailor and achieve. Um, it's sort of this like between toothpaste and shaving cream. Yeah, that's a good right? way to describe that, right? Yeah, right. It kind of like it's not as thick as a shaving cream, um, or sorry, as a toothpaste. But I find if it's like a little lighter than this, it tends to, you know. Like, yes, I like it. Not and saturated. The one thing about the silver powder lightener team, this is a silver in tone, so there is a violet blue base to it. So it helps control underlying pigments at levels by, um, five. Oh my gosh, nine and ten. So it'll help control underlying pigments. So this is a really great powder lightener, and the texture. This is what's beautiful about the powder lighteners. You can mix for the texture. You can mix it on the Unimix. You can use a whisk, or you can mix it with a brush, depending on the kind of texture that you like. Because as artists, we want to have different. We want to be in control, and we want different mixtures. And it's, it's interesting because I'll go into salons and they'll have eight different bleaches and it's because of the texture that they get from the bleach. Where you yeah. can actually mix the texture that you want with Lift Silver Powder Lightener. Yeah. All right, Just so want to shout out Morgan Sutcliffe Herndon is loving this placement and she can't wait to see you next week. Oh, Her they're team. coming to Redlands. Hell you, yeah. Salon Orchid is coming to Redlands for a private yeah. class. I'm excited to see you guys. Ooh. Yeah. Beautiful. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So moving to the back, I, I'm not actually using any bleach on Bailey. Uh, this is all my low lights. Um, and I started with a weave close to the hairline and then immediately moved on to a slice. So this is adding the shadow back into her hair that, yeah. from her summer blonde. Yeah, this is adding all of that dimension that we need when our glossing starts fading up. Right? And I like, so how did you paint it on? All the way up to the new growth or? For this, I did. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I always try to, I never do a slice thicker than a pin comb, than the tail of a pin comb. Why is that? Because um, I find you need more control. Uh, and like, if I were to be foilaging, um, I'll take a larger section. You want to cover a bit more ground. But when you're looking for a natural blend, I would rather do two foils, right. honestly. Right. And do you sandwich or do you always fold up? Uh, it really depends where I am on the head. Um, I find through the nape when they're processing, I prefer to foils or to uh, fold so that they can move their head around. But once I get past occipital, it's a sandwich all the way. Awesome. Yeah. So this is where you started adding the shadow for her over blonded summer hair. Yeah. I think that is so brilliant. Adding her highlight, going through addressing the, the over blondes at your low lights or yep. shadow. After she's finished, then gloss all the way through. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Great. Thank Beautiful. You for the tips. No, and thank then you. we are going to bring Michael up, and Michael's going to give you his tips. Thank Come you, on up, Michael. Thank you. I'm going to mix. Oh, let me mix. Come on over. Emma, this is fun. Mm -hmm. I mixing am going time. to mix. But what I'm mixing is it lift silver, which Ooh. was a violet blue. We're doing freehand. Oh, so this is one of the innovations that we were talking about. This team has guar gum and xanthan gum. So this is a beautiful hair painting. Again, we're not going to use the temperature button. No, no, no. No, no temperature no. for the powder lighteners. Look at this, and it smells so yummy. Mm, you can smell it through the screen, guys. So this has a green base, and this is what's really interesting. The reason why this one has a green base, if you think about, team, I'll give you a second, what neutralizes? Red, green. So anything that has red in it will get controlled. Not, neutral, not neutralized completely, but controlled. So here we're going to mix it the same way. I'm adding little by little. And this is, um, Michael will talk to you a little bit about, this is a freehand powder, but he uses it in foil. 
and I'll let him talk to you a little bit more about that. But here again, I'm making sure that all of the intended ingredients are mixed. We're taking all the powder off around this side. The innovation with this freehand powder lightener is, instead of a clay, which can take each moisture out of the hair while it's processing, it's a, it's, it's a, a gum base, so it encapsulates the moisture. The shine is ridiculous. All right, and the moisture and everything, and this is part of the color space way, the ingredients in the high performance. We have, uh, 20 volume, which is a cream developer, and this is how this system works. We've got shea butter in the developer, and the shea butter, which is hydrating and repairing, is also contributing to that shine. So we think about all the ingredients and why they're in there, so that you can have a high performance. All right, a high performance product. All right, so this team, look at how pretty that is. The, the, the more it mixes up, the whiter it gets, like the lighter. So it'll start, you can start seeing it going from a deeper green into a lighter powder. So here we go. We are almost done. Two minutes, what can you do in two minutes? All right, so you can see how airy this is. And you can mix this in different ways. Um, some of our team, which if you are interested, we have a freehand powder lightener class. We have a foil and freehand, Haley Reeb, amazing Shout out to and Haley. she can show you how she mixes it like i told like i said earlier before you have a powder lightener that you can you can customize to the texture that you like working with so i'm going to take this over to michael and get him started here you go thank you i'll take that for you sorry hello michael hi so what I did on Cece, like I said, she likes to change her hair a lot, probably too much. So I always want to go in with something usually very gentle on her, knowing that I'm often taking her from dark to light. So knowing that I was doing a little pre-work where I was updating her body as they wanted to do freehand, I don't like wasting product. I'm also a little bit of someone that works a little smarter and not harder. So why use two bowls when you can use one? So I decided to go in on CC and I dropped the developer knowing that I was putting a base in there. I used this at the lowest developer. I highlighted CC with fly volume and free hand. So what I did, going through, my first one, right at the hairline, baby weaves. She already has a beautiful balayage in there. I just need to bring it up and connect it in through the hairline. So I went in with my color space tail brush. That way you can get it really locked right in there. But also knowing that I'm dropping a base in there too, anything that's a little bit dropped down, it's gonna be soft. The thing that I love with the freehand is you can really get a beautiful saturation with it. And with the green pigment in there, you know it's also gonna neutralize at the same time, which makes your glossing so much easier. So do you like the texture? Is that why you're using, you're liking the freehand and foil? I love both of them, but I love doing a highlight with anyone that is a seven up with this, especially for my balayages that just need a little bit of a refresh or those ones that already have a base in there. Yes. Knowing that you can say, even if you don't really have time, they've opened a new growth and they're like, but I want highlights. You can go in and just freehand this at the sink and it's gonna give you a beautiful dimensional highlight that you don't even have to touch. Like the Scandinavian hairline yeah. um, highlight? This works beautiful for that. I use that on my one of my really good friends who's a level seven. I just slice out that hairline, paint it down an inch, and it's beautiful. Uh, this makes sense. This, I, I completely understand this. Lift Silver Freehand Powder Lightener will give you nine levels of lift. This gives you seven. So it's a bit more gentler than... Especially when people want to change it, you have to carry about the porosity of their hair. Correct, You don't correct. want to blast open that cube. Correct. Nice. And one thing that I love to do with anything that's on finer sections is you lock it in. That way it's not going to slip down, especially knowing that you're putting weight over top of Excellent. that. Excellent. These ones tend to drop. And that's lock how you end down. up with that bleeding, you end up with that shadow around the hairline and that's when you're blonde you're like i'm not blonde enough when i put my hair in a ponytail yes they see a shadow 
So Cece was only done in, I want to say, eight foils around the hairline just to freshen up the balayage. So the one behind it that I did, I did a back comb. So I went right from the top of the ear. She, Cece has a side part, so it worked out perfectly. And then I did a baby weave, almost like a check mark. A little back combing action. A little back combing, and then over direction. Right. Completely away from that. And why do you over direct? Because you want to get that right to the root. You don't want to get it, you want your foil to be locked right in, but you also want it to be a bit of a shadow. And it also allows you to smush out any of those little hairs yeah. that you don't want. Move them out. Get nice, them so out not of the your way. cushioning. I see that. Nice. Go in with your free hand. And so this technique is great to help with any type of, to, to prevent lines, hard lines at that. Because the second you have a hard line in a balayage, it takes so much work to soften that. And then you're ending up putting too much product in the hair, I find. Nice. And I noticed your hand, like how your 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 hand was really wide underneath that foil. You want to be able to support it. You want to yes. give it a really good base. Even though this one's locked in, right. you don't want to smush it. Right. And I find anything for the first inch around the hairline, I'll still lock it. Because nice. even though it's already dropped, you don't want it to drop any further. Great. All right, and so our next foil. Our next foil. I took a very large section to do a balayage on, and I went behind the ear. And it was a very, very large V. That's a chunky, that's chunky. It is chunky. So why behind the ear? Because I wanna leave a little bit of a pocket of depth here. Okay. So most women, no matter what their age, they always find their face too round. Whether it can be as chiseled as stone, Having a little bit of depth here and a little bit of darkness right here, knowing that it's only going to be on the surface that's painted, slims out the neckline, slims out the jaw, and having that, knowing that there's lightness over top of it, like we talked about, right. you need that background to show off the lightness. Oh, nice. So it's like a frame. Like you're framing their face with their, their color. And then I did a very large weave. I didn't even back home any of it. I went in actually quite heavy with this. Okay. I changed my brushes over. All right. To oh, to the little one. Little yes, guy. this is the narrow team. She's so cute. And I learned this from Haley, wanting the thinnest bead of color. And you just go in. You want your heaviest saturation in quadrant two, knowing that you are feathering that up and you're going to go down. Normally I would do this with gloves, but why bother? <laughs> so you're putting it on heavier in that quadrant two, the space two. And then I'm feathering it up, keeping it really, really tight, over directing it forward. And when I reapply, I go back to section two and then I work that product up. And that's going to give you that really soft gradient that's going to tone so beautifully because the underlining pigment of this free hand does half the work for you. And the texture is so pretty. So pretty. And all of this. This is where saturation is super important because this is going to be that flash that you get in through the front of the layers. You want to do one side, you want to flip it and do the other. And if the product looks like it's drying out, you go in enough. Awesome. So while all of this was sitting on CC, I went in and dropped that base in between her. And then, like I said, I pulled through pieces of that 5.00 mixed with the clear knowing that she's going to want to lift it out probably in the fall to be a copper like we've already planned. 
Uh, it's just gonna be cowboy copper. Is that is that cowboy the plan? copper? Cowboy copper. And then everything that was left out, knowing that by the time I was done doing my base, this has already sat here for about 25 minutes, I'd say. So the product's already starting to die out. So I pulled everything forward, looked at our looked at our layers, and I was like, you know what? Some of these have gotten a little overtoned, a little muddy. But they're already highlighted. So knowing that this is only five volume, but knowing that this was probably already a level 10 before it was toned, it doesn't take much for me to bunch that tone out. I would just go in with the product that was left over in the bowl. Yeah. And I would just tip it out. Nice. And you can get this right in there, really heavy. And it's Feather just it up. brightening up those end pieces. Just those end pieces. They don't need a lot of work. They only probably need, by the time I'm done this, I know that base is going to be done in about 10 minutes. And that's all it needs to do that tonal shift in there, knowing that I am going to be still glossing her. But it gives you a little bit more of a variation because in the photo, she was too solid on the bottom. So now we have that five. Now we have that pre-existing body as she already has. But now she has those little bit of lightness to make her still feel really fresh and it's just a little bit of an added value in there instead of just going in and dropping in a base and the glossing up through. It's a nice way that you can upsell a guest and a little added value service. Add that value. All right. I love this. I love how you're moving like gently without a high developer, a high working yeah. product that will just shift it out. Low developer and it should be like a dance. You and want to place the hair where you're going to see it. Instead right. of doing a full mm -hmm. balayage every time, which is over time that's how girls have to get extensions, their hair is over compromised. This is a way of just taking a full balayage appointment and just updating it and right. still darkening it. And both of you added the depth. That's what I think is so important. So as you're transitioning, you're overly blonded, not in a bad way, but they're blonde and they want to start going a little bit deeper or even change of tone. Add some shadows in there and then gloss right over. Add their little pieces to update their highlights and then add that shadow and then gloss on top and you're going to get a brand new look. That brand is look. brilliant. I love Best it. Bang for your buck. I'm going to do some clients. Place. When I get back and this gets better, I'm going to do some clients. Okay. So let's move that out of the way. We're going to actually bring our models up. So in the color space way, this is what we do. They've had their they had their preview, they had the greeting, they had the portfolio, their consultation and connect. Concer com confirmed service upgrade. They did it. They've got their bond, they did their service. And right now we're right here. Team, we're right here. So we are going to mix up their demi. Um, I'm going to take you over here. So this is our Demi. Yay. Here. And just want to shout out Melissa Spray says hi friends. SGPT member Melissa's in the house. All right, here we go. This is our 3D EMI. And what we have in here is 8.13 and 8.3, and this is going to be Grant's new growth application. So with 3D EMI, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the benefits in a minute once I start mixing, but I am going to mix her, um, the developer into this product. We have an opportunity to mix with cream or liquid team. So we're going to do, this is a new growth application that he decided to do a bowl and brush. And then I'll mix up the liquid in the bottle and he is going to do the mid links and ends with the bottle. So you have an opportunity to bowl and brush, do some shadow rooting, do whatever you want with your special techniques. So we have our Cream Activate developer and I will add this. Just wanna shout yeah. out Kate, Educator Kate is here and Dawn, hi guys. Hi Thank guys. you so much for joining. 20 grams or 40? 40. 40, 40 okay. Please. Here we go, so I'm gonna add 40 grams of our cream put it on the scale and you can see that the actual magnet is in there now and i am not going to hit the heat button for this product 3d emi does not need heat for its on the scale application all right team this team is what you're seeing right here is our little sneak peek this is 3d emi this is color space's new innovation 
We have zero ammonia free, which is ammonia free hair color. We have primary permanent hair color, which is the first scientifically calibrated hair color in levels. Now, and both have a micro fracture dye molecule. I'm telling you, there's serious science happening up in here. This team is science not only with the science, but with the botanicals. This is the first hair color that is addressing scalp care. This is adaptogenic. It's conditioning, moisturizing, it's antioxidizing, so you have, and moisturizing. So we've got de the desert blend. We have six desert blends that are actually helping the scalp while we're coloring the hair. This is amazing. Not only is it true to level and tone, it is not progressive. So the longer it sits, the prettier it gets, the shinier it gets, the more of the long lasting color. So if you go from 10 to 20 volume, it's still the same level. You just have longevity. Is that crazy? So it will not go dark. All right, so we are done. You can mix it. You don't have to mix it for the two minutes. You can tell it's done. So I'm gonna pass this off to Grant and let him talk a little bit about what he's doing. Amazing. There you go. Hello again. Hello. I've missed you all. We missed I'm gonna you. swing around, make Emma's job a little bit easier. Welcome back, Bailey. Hi, Bailey. Hi. Okay. <laughs> Um, so earlier when I was going over my foil placement, I mentioned um, doing stronger slices and adding more dimension to the back. Uh, so that's gonna be directly reflected in our glossing application. I'm gonna do more of a root through the back and a little bit less through the top and all but skip the hairline, just the hairline. Um, so that when we go back to the sink afterwards for our bottle application, I can smudge that down and start glossing these ends and dropping them and getting her closer and closer to that beautiful brunette. I'm still to this day fighting her. <laughs> uh. So right now, if you look, I like to start with a split through the middle so I can make almost like a Christmas tree with my application. It will remind you to make a little bit of a, a lower root through here and a much shorter root through there. Because like, let's face it, these are not things that we have all day to do. And I sometimes become a very well-equipped but machine. Um, <laughs> and anything that I can do to hold myself accountable to best practice, I will. Thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, no. Um, so if you see over here, that sort of Christmas tree that I was mentioning, as I start taking diagonal sections down, so I'm not fighting gravity with wet hair at a sink on a busy Saturday, um, I'm sort of reflecting the length of that root. Once the hair is wet, everything gets a little confusing. It starts blending in so much. And I find once you put something on, like any product regardless, um, you apply it, it's always going to sort of follow the water a little bit further. So be mindful of that. So for CC's shadow root, we are going in and doing an 8.13. Cut with clear. CC loves her beige, as do I. I think it's the most flattering tone on every human. Also, the good thing about the 3D EMI is I know that eventually I'm either going to have to darken this or lighten it, and it keeps my job really simple without compromising the integrity of Cece's hair. All right, and then what is the formula again? It is 20 grams of 8.13, 20 grams clear, and then equal parts of five volume cream. Awesome. I love the cream just because of how much control it gives me in my application. How, the product just glides right through, right? So creamy, so hydrating, so soft. 
All right, so what I'm doing here is we are getting ready to do, um, I'm mixing up for the team's uh, mid links and ends. So we are mixing equal parts. So we're mixing one to one. I've got five volume liquid. It would help if I took the lid off. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Let's add our developer to this. This is what the beauty is. You have a bowl and brush application using cream activator, which has shea butter. And then we have our liquid for our bottle application, which has a UV protectant by pro vitamin B5. So this team is our mid links and ends formulas. So as the team is working, this I'm gonna give you a little bit of a highlight, more of this information on our 3D EMI. I'm very proud to share this with you. It is gonna be out a soon, very, very soon. So you guys keep looking for this. We've got a couple of weeks All happening. It is here. So this has been in the making for a little bit. So we have an adaptogenic product that actually helps the scalp. So healthy scalp, healthy hair. This is the most amazing product that it is true to level and true to tone. So this is what's gonna happen today. We're going to process, they're doing their shadow roots here, painting with the brush in the brush technique. And then what we're going to do is take the girls back to the shampoo bowl and they're going to use their bottle um, application with the liquid, the same formula, but with liquid and comb through their hair. Now with our system with color space, what we did is we will always make sure that the hair is in optimum condition and that helps the performance of color, which most, most people would under, truly understand that. So both of the girls had their hair shampooed and a bond treatment. The bond treatment was put on for five minutes while we were talking and mixing rinse that out and apply your demi the demi color the 3d emi on top once this is done we'll shampoo once and in the system what we have is an innovation called stop stop actually stops the process of color it, it exhausts the, the oxygen in the developers so it stops the process it's a ph normalizer it shuts that cuticle down and it kills all the chemistry that's still working in the hair. This team has shea butter, so it's hydrating and conditioning. So you get that as well. And when we're finished, this is what we're going to do. We are going to blow dry our models, finish them, and we are gonna post their before, their, before their, um, then their after photo of the pre-work, and then the after photo of their 3D EMI, so you can see the finishes. So today was a great lesson. We had best practices, what they like to use on, um, on a face frame, using Lift Silver Powder Lightener, also using freehand powder lightener in a foil, which I thought was really Love great. It. Yeah, the texture was absolutely beautiful. So nice for a foil. Yeah, and I really like the, the tips on doing the low lighting through the hair after you get the highlights in, and then gloss to give them their winter look beautiful beautiful job team so we will look um, we will talk to you in a couple of weeks we're going to have another live coming up soon and if you have any questions comments we'll type them up as you watch this video and we will be back in a day and we will give you some answers so great job team thank you Grant. thank you guys thanks for joining us everyone thank thanks you. guys bye thank you bye